Hello, welcome back to my studio. Today I'm going to be looking at some painting tips and more specifically that dreaded part of your painting, the landscape foreground, what to do with it. Stick around and watch these few tips and then I'm going to do a little demonstration just putting these ideas into effect. Now very often you're out in the landscape and you take some beautiful photos and you get back to your studio and you look at the photo and you think, oh, there's a nice mountain, there's something perhaps in the middle of the ground, but what do I do with all this boring foreground? We're so taken with the, the giant expanse of nature when we're out there, but in a photo it just looks like dead ground and very confusing. What do you do with it? So I'm going to start off with looking at a typical scene like this and go through a few ideas on the computer with you and then we'll have a look at a few little uh, preparation studies you could say to see how these ideas can be uh, filtered out in your own mind and trying to figure out which is the best option and then you can go for it and uh, put that idea into effect and discover that there's a lot more that you can do with foregrounds than you may have thought. Let's have a look at this scene. There's a lot of potential. There's some nice elements. We've got the clouds, the mountains. In the middle, we've got the bushes, etc. But there's a lot of dead space potential. And we've got this big foreground area. So what we're going to look at is what to do with this area. A simple way, of course, is to simply crop right up to perhaps this area over here. Just take all of this out and go straight in. I'm not entirely happy with that approach. I think the foreground has a lot of potential to take us into the scene. If I put all of this over here right in the foreground, potentially it's going to just be something that the eye can hit against and get stuck. So I think having an area in the foreground to get you into the scene and then move around is a good idea. Then I can make something about this as a feature in the middle ground. Even these smaller shapes can then come into play and the eye can go over or around, but you've got a decision space area and the foreground plays that role as well. Another aspect to make that a little more dramatic would be to perhaps crop that out. Then your lead-in area in the foreground actually becomes bigger and serves a lot more purpose. So don't discount the foreground straight away. So let's have a look at a few of these with this particular reference and how we could change the foreground or deal with it in a more interesting way. All right, let's play around with a few options. Let's have a look over here. The first thing that I'm probably going to suggest you do is to look for spatial markers. Now let's just do a very rough format of the scene. Now, looking for spatial markers or other indicators, I'm thinking of things like paths, roads, rocks, and uh, what I see here are these nice fence posts all from the sort of center into the painting and etc. There's, there's a pole over here as well, just sticking out. So you can take those and move some around. Here you could put a pole right down over here, for instance, coming out from the, the bottom of the picture plane, and take another one, and help them to take the eye in and beyond, so they link up the eyes from the foreground to that viewpoint take you past that as well and down that way. Now you could bring that 
mark it to life with some color as well, catching some light, especially on there perhaps. If you feel that maybe this area is too open and it needs a bit of uh, balance, well perhaps that mountain balances this out but we could also add something over there just to counterbalance those objects. Right, in this next one, a frequent device that is used by artists is to use shadows. Now in this scene I can see a shadow at the base over here. There's very little shadow actually coming across from the, the reference. But that doesn't mean you can't improvise and make that happen. So let's take for instance some cerulean blue, a little bit of alizarin, touch of white. Now I could create more of a shadow from these objects. And I call them objects because that's what they are for us in a painting. Right? Basically they are props. But what about taking this idea and bringing a shadow right across? Right? That is a common device used and it generally works very well. I call it a welcome mat leading you into a painting, something for you to step over. And of course we've got to make sure that everything else is taking that idea forward as well. And there are shadows. And that will also mean you've got to suggest light. So we may just have to emphasize the light a little. So we may just have to emphasize the light a little. on these shrubs and bushes over here. And darkest right at the core of the shadow. Now just to see how that works out, let's put some color in the foreground, get some red over there. And now we can make and emphasize the, the color and perhaps get something quite exciting going in the foreground. With some complementary color, yellows against blue and violet, blue against the orangey, yellow, violet against the yellowy colors, all of that working together. Okay, so we got that idea and you can carry it forward as well into the background with the distant mountains. being some sort of softer, cool color and cool neutral. Okay, so just for having that shadow, it opens those possibilities up. Another consideration is to make more of the foreground as far as texture is concerned. And one thing to keep in mind is that with a foreground shape, you want to have the shapes bigger than in the middle or even the background. And one way to do that is of course to use a bigger brush. Just a, just a bigger brush 
then what you're going to use back here is going to make shapes bigger in the foreground. So this bigger shapes straight away catches the eye and will create a bigger and bolder, more textured foreground. Now to add to this foreground, you can build up layers, thicker paint, varied paint application, and also broken color. So there's a couple of ideas there to consider. So for instance, I'll look at the reference and I'm looking at the color of the soil and although the photo is somewhat washed out, as an artist, I can make a bit more of that and I'm seeing some good burnt sienna colors. So I can get in an underlayer there. You can even start that off with some acrylic paint if you're gonna paint over it in oils. Get that in, let it dry a bit. I'm using oils here, but using it very thin to start off. And then I'm gonna transition that a little to some yellow ochre. And as we go into the middle distance, it gets lighter. And into the far distance, lighter and cooler. So we'll transition to a sort of a pinkish color. And just get that done. And just break that with a bit of blue as well. All right, so we got a nice spatial division already from foreground to middle and then into a cooler background. So that's the underlayer. Now let's get something more interesting with this foreground. Now some deep yellow. I can mix a bit of that burnt sienna. I can mix a bit of that burnt sienna into it. A little bit of white. Get quite a lot of paint on your brush and you can start putting in some broken color, drag the brush over, let some of that burnt sienna show through from underneath. Put a bit of lemon yellow into that and just put on visible and thick strokes of paint a bit more light, you can bring lights, darks, doesn't matter, as long as there is a variety of texture and shape being built up. And we've got those shadows that we can bring back in as well, just, just a few leaning towards the violet colors. And that will work nicely against the yellows. Now I'm going to make quite a value shift here. I'll put a bit of white, a bit more yellow, quite a lot of paint in. I'm going to go right up against that shadow and drop in some thick and juicy paint right there. All about making this foreground interesting. If I want the eye to go this way, I will put some accent color, some vibrant contrasting color. Bring a bit more red into it, right in the, up into the foreground, some burnt sienna and that red, bit of that yellow, and I can get some of that showing through, some of that red earth. Okay, now we've got a really interesting foreground of texture, warm color, really hot, which of course goes with this scene. Ah, oh, there's some shrubs and things like that. They're almost burnt out and washed out from the heat. And that's potential contrast there. So a bit of cerulean blue, some white, a touch of that yellow just for harmony and we can 
put these in there as well. All contrasting with that hot color underneath. Bigger in the foreground. Don't forget some sort of shadow. All right, then much more interesting foreground. Now remember you can get ideas from master artists as well. Get a book on the Impressionists, for instance, and just page through it and see what they actually did with the foreground. We're so taken with the focal area and the subject, but we sometimes forget to have a look at the foreground and just see how they treated it. And why can't you do the same? Take those ideas and make them your own. All right, don't forget, I've got a free course for you up here, or maybe there's a link next to this video, depending on where you're looking at it. And you can start that course anytime it's yours for free. And don't forget to subscribe. You don't want to miss the next video. So look out for that subscription button and have a go and subscribe right now. All right, until next time, happy painting and cheers for now.